After speeches from various dignitaries, Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen Ayyid Allah Ta'ala bin Asir al-Aziz addressed the gathering. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan nabiyyan rasuluh amma ba'du fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim All the honorable guests Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Peace and blessing of Allah be upon you all <coughs> Firstly I would like to thank all the guests who have come to attend the 50th anniversary of our Noor Mosque here in Frankfurt today. The fact that you are here shows that you are open-minded people because you have come despite the fact that there is an, an ongoing anti-Islamic campaign being waged in society, not only against Muslims but against Islam itself. And after listening to the speeches of all the honorable speakers, I am now more, more confident than that I am right in thinking this, or of uh, having this view, that you are all open-minded people sitting in front of me. Anyway, this campaign by the opponents of Islam presents Islam as an extremist faith. However, this is far removed from the actual teachings of the religion. When people who are unfamiliar with Islam hear such claims, or when they listen to news of terrorists, Muslim suicide bombers or fanatics and hardliners, they begin to believe that Islam really, really is an extreme religion that promotes terror and that Muslims follow hatred and consider every non-Muslim to be worthless. Moreover, they consider that it is only the teachings of Islam that pose a threat to the world peace. And it is now, I am happy that who are sitting here are not of this view, but there are quite a number of people in the world who still hold this view. Unfortunately, this entirely false notion has now taken firm root. However, I shall now clarify some of these misunderstandings in light of the true teachings of Islam. As I mentioned earlier, the fact that you have come here despite hearing all such allegations proves that you do not wish to only hear one point of view, but fulfilling the requirements of justice and fair play. You have come to see what the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat says about the teachings of Islam. I have always said that I am not ashamed to admit that certain extremist Muslims, uh, Muslim groups have created great disorder in the world. However, this lack of peace exists more in the countries of the perpetrators themselves rather than in Europe or other places in the world. 
This cle clearly illustrates that this battle is not against any religion, but is the work of a small and self-serving group who create disorder and carry out attacks in the name of religion. If you analyze the situation, you will realize that these people who serve their own interest have killed more Muslims than people of other faiths. The non-Muslims being killed are those who are sending armies to assist such Muslim countries, perhaps on the pretext of establishing peace. I do not wish to comment on whether military assistance is right or wrong, or whether the assessments of the Western powers regarding the future plans of the terrorists are sound, nor do I wish to comment upon the strategic position of Pakistan, Afghanistan and Iraq, or whether the terrorists are trying to dominate such areas, or what the final solution be in tackling the war on terror. These are all separate issues on which I, I would prefer not to speak at this time. However, as the head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, I would like to remove the misunderstandings about Islam in light of its true teachings and present to you the real and beautiful picture of Islam as we see it. I now present to you a few examples of Islamic teachings based on the Holy Quran with regards to establishing world peace. If we look at the fundamental reasons for religious animosity amongst the followers of religion, the principal causes are when people reject the founders of each other's religion as false, mock them and consequently ridicule the customs and rituals that are linked to the founder of respective religion. Let us see what Islam teaches about the prophets or the founders of religions. Chapter 3, verse 85 of the Holy Quran states, Say, we believe in Allah and in that which has been revealed to us and that which was revealed to Abraham and to Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes and that which was given to Moses and Jesus and other prophets from their Lord. Make no distinction between any of them and to him we submit. This is beautiful teachings of Islam. If a Muslim claims to obey Allah, he is duty bound to believe in all the prophets to the extent that at another place Allah the Almighty states that he has sent prophets to all the nations as a means to reform people, some of whom Allah has named in the Quran. Thus Islam has laid the foundation for peace, harmony and reconciliation by making all the founders of religions worthy of respect.